All right. So next, I guess, I guess we're moving into the, I mean, so who the most mediocre fucking football team in the last two decades. I mean, at one point paper alone, always, always talented on paper, the always talented on paper. 12 Cowboys. Stewart's team, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. (laughs) The Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they are just take it away, Stu. Tell us all about Jerry Jones and how much you fucking love this team. Oh, fucking. I What's your fi- no, let, let, let me ask you this. What's your finest memory of being a Dallas Cowboy fan? Besides that Creed halftime show. <laughs> oh, dude, that was going to be mine. He re- <laughs> memory of being You know, I used they used to have a uh, Dallas Cowboys monthly like newspaper that I used to get and like that was always cool that. like they were always like interviewing Larry Allen and shit. So, I don't know. Oh, nice. Anything well, Larry had a Allen. stick Aikman jersey, remember? I had a we- jersey. I bet you Westboro Baptist bought some ads in that fucking magazine. You <laughs> should go you should go back and look look for in some the other. Dallas Desperados. <laughs> that was Jerry Jones's AFL team. So we got uh not a lot changed from last year except oh wait, a couple big things changed. I was gonna say, Amari- wait, hold on. Yeah, they gave oh, Amari got- Cooper to the Browns for nothing. Yeah, Amar- Amari hey. Cooper is out. CD Lamb has now ascended to pure wide receiver one. He is the guy in he it's his third year in the league. Uh they're you know, they're trying to hope that he can be the guy, kind of like how Justin Jefferson is starting to be the guy for Minnesota and take the reins and be the franchise player. I just uh I, what do you guys think? I, th- I think in moments he's looked like he could be that player. And I think in other moments he's completely disappeared. And that really worries me. Are we talking uh, about CD? CD, yeah. Le- yeah CD so Le- I was listening. So, at, you know, now that it's fantasy year season, uh, I have serious radio and, and it, my, my radio literally never leaves the fantasy uh, serious station. And today, uh, John Hanson, the guru who, who's on in the morning on my way to work, he uh he he brought up CD Lamb and he was they were talking about like the you know the leagues that you have to like pay money to make trades and stuff like that and and all that uh you're like set tr- I guess you get like trade money. Um he was saying that he would when drafting teams in these leagues, he would CD Lamb is so expensive that he would draft Darnell Mooney almost every time over CD Lamb because of how cheap he is. And 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 it, he says arguably in their career so far, he thinks Darnell Mooney's been more impressive than CD Lamb. It's just CD Lamb's in a better offense. So I'm surprised. I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm surprised this team did not seek out a veteran receiver. Me too. I mean there there are Emmanuel Sanders, not a guy that is going to be the guy, but he can be a guy and be effective like you you can get a fucking colt well cole beasley will probably never go back to dallas i think he said they they hate each other but like o- odell beckham jr still there emmanuel sanders is still there ty hilton is still available like i'm i, I cannot believe that they're leaving it to cd lamb and then Gallup, who he can't stay healthy and then a bunch they got of they got a good rookie in Jalen Tolbert, and I think I like Jalen Tolbert, and I like Dalton Schultz as a tight end as well. I think he um, is gonna. I mean, he might he might get a, over 100 targets this year in that offense. He for did my last, for my fantasy did, football yeah, team, I hope crazy. so. He did get 100 targets last year, and so um, you know, I think he he could be a big part of that offense. I don't like this running back room where it's at right now um, in terms of there's really no nobody knows what. Like there's no lead back. Tony Pollard could be the like future Ezekiel Elliott. He was Cowboys good. Cowboys fans love Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard's been mm-hmm. lining up at slot receiver. Yep. Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott's really good. He was really good last year when he was help when he was he was really good when he was healthy. Then he had, you know, some injuries and kind of played like shit down the back half of the season. Yeah. He looked um, chunky coming into this year too. He averaged not. eighty yards a game last year. He's he and he, and he He's not getting any better. He is steadily the – his production has just well, sucked. People forget about Zeke is that through the first – I think it was five or six weeks last year, he was like the running back four. Yeah, no, or he was – that's, that's what I was saying. He was, on, he was on fire um, before he got injured, So And you're right. He, he got hurt. I think, you know, they, they have a not quite as good offensive line. I know they're ranked like sixth or seventh. Um, in the past, they've been up there at like two or three uh, offensive line units. Um 
And I kind of agree with Stu. I can't believe they didn't get a veteran receiver presence, um, especially think, after James Washington went, went down. Do you yeah. think that um, by letting, oh God, what's the name of the receiver that the Browns just got? Amari. Amari Cooper. Cooper. Amari. Do you think uh, Jerry is kicking himself for letting Amari Cooper walk, especially considering how much he was asking Ben? Fucking just double down on it. He could have paid Amari Cooper that the Christian Kirk contract would have hit, the right receiver market would have exploded, and you would have still had Amari Cooper for a fucking bargain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he just doubled down on it. I mean, he was the one that just said, you know, his availability and just kind of shit all over Amari a week ago in that interview. I mean, so I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying Amari Cooper is I mean, I I do think there are concerns about Amari Cooper and I do see why a team would move on from him. I'm not saying it's gonna like I still think he has a lot of productive years in him, but I don't think it's like a guarantee that he's gonna be, you know, a really high quality wide receiver in Cleveland either. So yeah, they gave um, him up for nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they did. Yeah, yeah they no, no, no I, there was definitely dog no, shit. I just think it's gnarly you, to see a guy like Jerry who has historically he's always been down to open up the wallet and you know pay the big yeah. bucks to get the marquee guys. He's kind of being cheap. Like this yeah. past year, he's re- it's, yeah. he's being. He's yeah, I mean, I like Mike. Up. Back to the receivers, though. Before we move on to the defense, I, I like Michael Gallup. Like I, I think, I mean, he just got. They obviously believe in him. I mean, they just paid him. I mean, they move on from Amari and then give him a five year deal. Yeah. Um, you know, he he proved the last year, like when he was healthy. I mean, he looked damn good. Um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he. I think he. I definitely agree that they should have brought in like a uh, like a veteran presence. But I, I do think that like. The, the, on paper, I mean, Lamb Gallup Tolbert is is pretty good. Yeah, Gallup had I moments agree. last year where he was outshining CD in a lot. Oh, absolutely, in, 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 yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, like yeah, yeah, there was absolutely. there there would be quarters that would go by. I'd be like, where the fuck was CD Lamb that quarter? Because yeah, Michael Gallup right. just caught six passes. Right. He's a he's a big dude. My, Michael's a big dude. He's he's great. Kind of you know running down the sideline, coming across the middle too on slants. I mean. Um, he fits in that offense well, and they're really going to need him to do that. I could see Gallup sliding right into what Amari was doing last year. Are, are you um, going to? What, what was their offensive line ranked? Uh, six right now, six. and um, it's not okay. going to get better. That offensive line is yeah. old. Yeah, well, they I'm were undefeated. In that well, so they were they were twelve and five last year, undefeated in the division. So I mean, they they are they are definitely. Uh, I said earlier, I think Philadelphia wins this division, but I think, you know, obviously coming into this year, I think Dallas is probably the team to beat. You know, I think yeah. Dallas yeah. is the team to to overcome. Um, but, but the defense, you know, they have a good defense. Um, they just lose out on Randy Gregory on like almost kind of almost in kind of like funny fashion. But, you know, he ends up in Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they have they, that doesn't take I mean, they've got the the, the best probably maybe the best linebacker in the league already. Um, if it, definitely the best young linebacker, Micah Parsons. And I would, l- I mean, I'd love for somebody to argue that um, the guy is just a fucking stud. Um, Trayvon Diggs is an animal. Um, Demarcus Lawrence is, you know, hit or miss. Leighton um, Van Der Esch is a Leighton stud. Van Der Esch is a stud when, he's, when, when he's healthy. Um, Got to love anybody that rocks the fucking, the goddamn neck brace things. And too. I, I think I, Neck I roll. I read alert earlier today that Anthony Barr just passed his physical. Anthony Barr mistaken. passed a physical today. Uh, Michael so Parsons. They got him back. lining up at. They got him lining up at, at literally at all three phases of the defense. I don't know if you yeah. saw, but he was he was fucking around playing cornerback, just like playing around. Uh, he can do it all. Um, I think the problem with this defense for me is that they are beatable simply absolutely. because that right cornerback Trayvon Diggs. He he literally either gets an interception or he gets burned. Right. And there's almost no in between. Um, you kind of have a weak uh, defensive line too. I mean, yes, Demarcus is there, but um, Ar- Armstrong and, and Gallimore, okay, you know they're they're all, they're serviceable, um, but definitely Fowler. linebacker. Anthony's, I heard that name in a while. Anthony Brown is serviceable. Cox. I tell you what, they're going to test Trayvon Diggs early in the season. Why there's would gonna you be, not? There's going to be teams that are going for that side of the field. Dude, I mean, who gets he got stopped by a fucking UDFA day. and then deleted his Twitter? <laughs> okay. yeah. I so they also stop and go. They also lost. Uh, they lost Randy Gregory defensive. That's end. what I say. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. They lost him to, to Denver. Right. Um, so good. And, and they, which was kind of funny because like they they thought he was gonna because didn't they they he was gonna resign there. He said he was gonna resign there, and then he changed his mind and went to Denver. <laughs> yep. Hey, I would have too. I don't blame you, Randy. <laughs> I know you guys. Uh, a good spot for him. 
I know yeah. you guys are really into the special teams too. Uh, oh, yeah, Greg, yeah. the leg obviously was also. Uh, yeah. We learned la- we learned last, or was it the week be- two weeks ago that he went to the Jets. So, yeah. Yeah, so now we've got Brian Anger, Tony. I've never Paul heard of him. returning kicks, dude. Yeah, and dude, look at he- that former uh, Rams Pro Bowl long snapper Jake McQuaid. Jake McQuaid, baby, look wait, at wait. him. What's the name of their kicker? Liram Halrua. Hajrula? Hajrulahu? Not even gonna Hajrulahu? Oh, I'll, I'll have to enough. have uh yeah, he's better he's be- good enough to have Brett Maher second string. It, so do they really have um Pro Bowl selections for long snappers? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I did not they, know that. They started doing that just a few years ago, I believe. But yeah, Jake McQuay, gotcha. I mean hey dude, shout out uh fellow gingers, right, Pat? Like hey. Uh, yeah, dude. I I just didn't know that was a thing. To be honest with you, that's that just surprised me. Yes, um, he's a pro bowler. Yeah. All right, let's head on school. over to the Scatty. About time. Schedule City. Oh, uh, breaking news: Drew Lock has COVID. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Geno uh, Smith, you're locked. Geno Smith, QB one season, baby. <laughs> Here we Here go. We go. <laughs> oh, started from the bottom. <laughs> started from the bottom. Now we hear our Messiah. Um, so what's <laughs> coach? So how many watermelons is Coach McCarthy going to have to smash before these games to get his team to fucking win? Uh, no, it wasn't three. Do you, got, do you guys know about this story about M- Mike McCarthy last year? No. He likes watermelon? He, d- to pump his team up before a game, he fucking smashed a watermelon. He, like, like he's got fucking the, Gallagher? Like Gal- he, no, he totally got a Gallagher thing. He like <laughs> brought them out into a conference room at the hotel they were staying at. And it was like during a losing streak, and he literally took a hammer and smashed watermelon. So he broke out the sledgematic. Pat, can you he, scroll down a little bit? He's oh, yeah, the no, biggest fucking loser in the world. Uh, Mike McCarthy fucking sucks. I can't. God, that dude yeah, got that, carried in Green Bay. Yeah, I didn't know that. So I'm count. I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm counting up with. So I got four. I got they're four and four to buy for me. That's what I've got. Okay. I take it back. Prime Video has one good game, and it's the Cowboys <laughs> at Tennessee. There it is on Christmas. 29th. Yeah, or right after Christmas. Right after Christmas. So that's that should actually be a pretty. Oh, look game. at that! Eagles, wow. Cowboys. Fucking I will. Christmas I will Eve. be. I will be there, but I will not be that's paying one hundred seventy-two dollars for that Four ticket. Four. I'm actually surprised with where I ended up with 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 Dallas. To be honest with you, um, I'm looking about nine, nine and eight, eight, eight and nine, somewhere Ooh. right around five hundred. That's tough. Yeah. That's you know that's that's my opinion. Uh, I, you got some tough games in there, I think. There's some um, very winnable ones after the. I call this an eleven and six team. Yeah, eleven. So I'm and looking s- at four, four, so I got. Man. Jake, I'll, uh, dude, I will take that, Jack, but for sure. You think I was a little low with nine? Yes. This is going to be a competitive. There's, there's two teams that are going to win this yeah. division: the Cowboys, and the Eagles. Yeah, I, I say it's nine or so. I got. I don't. So I don't think I don't have eleven. I have ten. I don't. So I, I, yeah, I think they're four and four at the bye week, and I think they can beat New York, Houston, uh, Jacksonville, Washington, maybe, and then Indianapolis is like the. And I guess if you want to give them one of the Philly games too, so yeah, I guess I can see ten or eleven wins, but I, I think nine, nine or ten wins is more realistic. Eleven is the ceiling. I think they could beat Philly or Tennessee. Like I, yeah. I, I'm well, not, they're, they're I not, they're, yeah, they're not going to beat Philly twice though. Yeah, probably not. I had him split with Philly. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. So yeah, yeah so this would be a, this would be okay. a pretty good this ten would be wins. a pretty good Cowboys team for yeah, Cowboys yeah. standards. Cowboys. They'll, they'll they'll make a their annual first round exit, and you know. Did the Cowboys win every divisional game last year, though? Yeah. So yeah, earlier I said six and zero in the division last year. Right, right. right. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. They'll split with the Eagles for sure. Yeah, they'll split with the Eagles. 